We're going to talk about um, fox hunting, okay? Uh, <clears throat> fox hunting is done in various different uh, uh, levels, let's say. Um, there are people who really go all out for fox hunting. Some of the guys on the West Coast do fox hunts that last for days. Hmm. Uh, and they have ha hidden transmitters out in the desert. <laughs> and uh, these transmitters have a sign-in sheet. If you find it, you sign in. And it runs for a month, believe it or not. Wow. Really? Okay, with a big die-hard battery attached to it, hmm. transmitting a few milliwatts. Uh, we don't get that crazy. Uh, we run our fox hunt to be a fun thing. Uh, and we don't go too far into hiding. Um, now some of the, and I'll show you some other uh, neat little gadgets here. Uh, we hide the transmitter, this is, it. this is the box right here. And we hide this in a park, a public place. That's what our rules are. We try, uh, we try to keep it in Bergen County. We try to keep it within 15 or 20 miles of the starting thing. As I said to you before, some of these things that go out in the deserts out there go for 20 miles. Mm. And these guys hunt and hunt and zigzag across country in jeeps. If you remember, a couple of years ago, there was an article in QST telling people to be careful because there were two guys in a jeep that were hunting out in California in a desert, mm. and they drove off a cliff. Oh, wow. And I was standing up in a jeep, oh. yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it, and he goes, okay, <laughs> boom. <laughs> It went right off a cliff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and it can distract you. Can distract you. It's, <laughs> if you're going to do it, um, you do it with two people. One guy as a navigator and the other guy as the driver. Okay. Uh, if you try to do it with one person, you end up going to have an accident. Because it gets very, very confusing. Now, some of the things that you may want to always have if you're in the fully rat is this is, a, this is a field strength meter. This is a VHF field strength meter. Um, it's, it's a broken field strength meter. It's a broken field strength It's a great little gadget to have. Uh, you don't need it, but uh, it's a great little gadget. Uh, it, uh, believe it or not, it's designed for looking for bugs. For what? Bugs. bugs. Danny? FBI bugs. FBI bugs. Type bugs. bugs. Like what my son-in-law does. You ought to see the neat stuff he has. <laughs> <laughs> Can we use it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Can we use his He's stuff? He's got some goodies. <clears throat> Real goodies. Anyway, um, this is the Fox. Uh, now, you don't need anything as sophisticated as this if you're the Fox, but uh, one of our guys really decided to make this thing up. And what it's doing right now is transmitting. Now, it's just putting out a bunch of little tones so that you can kind of follow it. And then what it does is it IDs according to the law, and uh, it then transmits. I don't know if you caught the CW. It says, "Catch me if you can." <laughs> and then uh, it'll run all day and all week on this on this battery here. So we just take this and we put it out. Now, if I need more of a signal, what I do, and I, what I need more, if I need more of a signal, uh, what I do is I'll use this. <coughs> Okay, so what I'll do is when we start the fox hunt, I will make a test and make sure people are able to hear me. Uh, what we do is we start the fox hunt, and in our case, we started off at the high school parking lot. And uh, what I usually will do, or what the uh, fox will do, is he'll turn the unit on and then make a phone call to somebody, or to, are you hearing it? Okay, and as long as people are hearing it, then uh, then they'll start the fox hunt. Obviously, you can't start if you if you haven't uh, heard it. Okay. Now, one of the things that is important is to think about is when you're fox hunting and you're using a directional antenna, which this is. Okay. Now, this is a typical fox hunt antenna. We'll show you a few more of them here. This one is one I homebrewed. Uh, it's a design that's been in the handbook. And it's very simple, and very, works very well as a transmitting antenna too. Obviously, any antenna that's good for receiving is good for transmitting. Okay. Now, one of the things that you're going to do is to use a handy talkie. Got one right here. Same, same as this. 
with a signal strength meter. You have to have an S meter on it, otherwise you're dead. Okay, so this one has an S meter, the Liesu, so this is one same model. And what you do is, as you start out, you start searching, and you start, whoop, you start searching for it. This is an attenuator. Now, this one happens to be a commercial one, which I bought here at uh, the Fairlawn auction. It had a problem that I fixed with an intermittent solder connection, in, but this happens to be far in excess of what you really need. Uh, there's no need that you need actual to read it, but this allows me to put in 101 dB of attenuation on the signal in 1 dB steps. Okay, so that's a significant thing. You don't need anything near that. Okay, all you need to do is to put in some attenuation so that you are not overloading the receiver. Okay, you don't want to have, when you're looking for a signal, you don't want to have a full scale reading. Okay, because full scale reading doesn't tell you anything, except it's a strong signal. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is to put enough attenuation in so that you say reading half scale. Once you start there, then you can move it around and see where it peaks. Once you see where it peaks, you can take your map. Do we have a Bergen County map here? I think we have it. Doesn't matter. What we do is we take a Bergen County map. Is it yours? Uh, we orient it north and uh, mark it so we know which way is north and then we can start from there. And then we'll draw a line or we'll put a mark on it and use our compass. And <clears throat> Now you can do it a number of different ways. Uh, some people just follow the signal and they do fine. Other people will drive around a circle and what they'll do is they'll make two or three measurements with this unit, with this, and with the compass, and they'll draw some lines on a map. And hopefully, you'll get there. Now, that all sounds very easy, but one of the things that you find out is that there are lots of things that fool you. Uh, reflections are one of them. Now, you have to be careful. For example, one of the things that you do, let's say when you leave the area where you've made your first measurement is, let's say you start out, in our case we start out in high school, parking lot, and you make your first measurement. It's a good idea to go about a mile, maybe not even that, maybe up the hill, another location, and take another reading. The reason I say that is that sometimes when you're next to a building, what happens is that you can be really looking at a pretty good signal that's a reflection. And if any of you participate and do any of this stuff, you'll find very quickly that you'll run into situations where that will happen. You'll, you'll run into a thing where you'll get completely disoriented and you say, it's this way. And everybody starts going that way. And they get about a mile that way and I say, wait a minute, it's that way. And believe it, it, it happens. So it's not easy, all that easy sometimes, even though we're looking for something that's fairly close. As I said, we're not out in the desert doing 20 miles or whatever. <coughs> so that's the type of things we do. Uh, now, again, <clears throat> one of the problems that you get onto, and I can kind of demonstrate this right now, is if you come upon and you get close to the fox, and let's say the fox is hiding somewhere, well, you're full scale, okay? Now, you start putting in the attenuator, and you're still <coughs> full scale. Why? Because remember, the attenuator is before the radio, and the radio is plastic. So what's going to happen is that the signal, when you get close to it, is going to go right into the radio. So you can be very frustrated if indeed someone has hidden the box mm. uh, behind a bush, you can be standing there with a full signal, I found it, I found it, and still not find it, okay? Now, in a lot of cases that doesn't really happen with us because by the time we get to the park, there's a guy sitting in his car with call it a license plates, and <laughs> yeah. he's, he's a fox, <laughs> so, <you know>? <laughs> <laughs> so we found him. However, if, if you really get 
down to it, uh, uh, I know of someone who took um, his daughter and his granddaughter and put the fox in the carriage. Oh, that's good. And they good. sat there in the park. Yeah. And guys walked by them. Sure. Walked right there. Where the hell is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. How do you get around that? Well, there is another way of seeing, because again, the attenuator will only give you what it can do, and it's an attenuator. But if you're looking at this, the way this jug up here, here's the attenuator, here's the antenna, here's a plastic radio. So when we're on top of the signal, the attenuator is, is not going to help us yeah. that much. Okay. By getting a metal radio. Yeah. Well, if you had a metal right radio a or a shielded right. radio, <laughs> yes, and we'll show you another technique here later. Yeah. But anyway, uh, what uh, what happens is that if you look at the way a radio works, the signal comes in, the signal is mixed, and it's going down to a lower volume <coughs> frequency. Well, there's another little trick, and that's called a mixer. Okay, this little gadget, which I built from a kit, is nothing more than a uh, offset attenuator. Now what does that mean? Well the offset attenuator, what it does is it has a crystal in there and it has a rudimentary mixer, a diode, because a diode is a nonlinear device and it's a mixer. It'll mix the two signals. So let's say I'm listening to 146 megahertz, okay, and I'm looking. Now I'm on top of it. 146 megahertz is, is blasted into my radio and it's written almost full scale and I know I'm on top of it, I can't find it. I put on my offset attenuator. The offset attenuator has an input from the antenna, which is listening to the signal. It also has a 4 megahertz oscillator and a little diode mixer. It's a very rudimentary crystal set you want to look at. It. However, what you can do is now remember we're overloading it with the signal. But what if we were to take that signal, take a little piece of it, and move it up 4 megahertz? Okay? And that's exactly what we're doing. We're taking the 146 coming in, we're taking the multiple of the 4 megahertz we're taking the, I don't know who did, how many, 36 multiple of whatever it is, mixing it with that 146 and coming out with something 4 megahertz above that. Those are two signals, they mix in the diode and you get a plus and you get a minus of whatever that is by that 4 megahertz. So in this case, what you do is you set your radio to 4 megahertz above the frequency that you're looking for. And now it becomes a very sensitive, but it's got to be right on top of the signal. You're not going to hear it from a half mile away. Once you're right on top of it, you have a, a, a pot on here, and I'm going to I'm going to give out the circuit for this in a minute. And what you do is you set the level. So now you're right on top of that sucker. I know it's here. I know I'm within 40 feet of it, but I don't know where it is. Now you turn this on, you put, take this out, and out I put this attenuator in. Now what I do, uh, I adjust the gain of the drive going into that little mixer to get the signal level, and now I hear it, but I'll hear it very weak. Guess what? Now it's an extremely sensitive thing. It will pick up. I could tell whether the thing was in that, under that table or whether it was under that table, okay? But only because we're doing this offset attenuator thing, taking a tiny little piece of the signal. So... But you've got to change the uh, frequency on a radio to like... You've got to change the frequency on a radio, and you've got to have a radio that will go up to 4 megahertz, okay? Typically, that's what they use for them. You can get about what with two, but then you tend to get some interference. So uh, you like four megahertz. So you've got to have a general coverage type radio 
in many cases because that four megahertz will be up out of the band, okay, out of the two meter band. So you've got to be able to hear above the ham bands, okay? So you need a radio to do that. So that's, that's the little secret there, and that's called the offset attenuator. Now as far as the search antenna, Tony, you want to show us some of the other antennas you have here? This, what I have here, is probably uh, a little bit overkill, uh, although this is a very directional antenna, uh, and I've got a matching loop in here, so it matches perfectly for the 50 ohms. It doesn't look too neat, but it works. And uh, you can transmit on this, got a one-on-one -on -one SWR, and it works as a great antenna if you want to have a handle. But uh, you, get, you get another 3 dB, let's say, of directivity because you've got the three elements on it. Tony's got a two element, one that works very well, and it'll also work as a transmit antenna. Jim, there's a question here. And it's much more compact. It's a little bit less wieldy than mine. Is your field strength meter sensitive enough to pick up a field strength when you're within 40, 50 feet of the uh, The field strength meter gets overloaded. It's overloaded? Okay. Yeah, I'll show you an example of what happens to a field strength meter. Okay. Now you see right now, I pull these things out. Whoops. Okay, so it's an amplified field strength meter. Okay, do you see it? You see this one here? It means it's being overloaded. Okay, this is more than a diode. Okay, now if I put these in here, you'll see it'll read a number yeah, indicating field strength. Okay, uh, but when you put it, it gets overloaded. Uh -huh. So, although this is a great little tool for aligning and measuring, it's really not worth it for uh, doing any uh, of this type of work. Good question. Yeah, question. Uh, when you get fairly close to these antennas, I thought that the, the directivity, the shape of the beam basically is not, uh, you're in the near field and basically the shape is not clean, what you would expect for a, at long range. That's so true. then you, your directivity and your pattern what, what is you not... notice, What you notice mm -hmm. is, just as you said, if you look at the directivity of an antenna like this, and you look at the pattern, it'll have lobes, okay, and they can fool you, and then you have the main lobe. However, the way you get around that is when you switch in your attenuator, the first thing that goes away the side lobe. is the lower lobes. Yeah, the side so lobe. what happens is that by putting in that 20 dB, you now just have one. And it's not that sharp. It's a, okay, you go about, about a 30, 40 degree uh, sweep as you see the S meter come up and then come back down yeah. again. So, uh, so you're it, lobing, right? It's what people call sequential lobing. You're lobing. Yeah, and you see it when you go back and forth. Can you see one? No. With an antenna, you guys know that if you're aimed at the signal this way, you can get a dB loss by turning it this way. Now again, the antenna is putting out a vertical signal, but you don't have to be vertically polarized to fox hunt. It helps to get the stronger signal when they're both vertical. But by turning it, is a, I've read that it's a 20 dB difference in the signal between horizontal and vertical. So don't be afraid to move your antenna in the different place. <coughs> um, I also provided a handle back here that I can rotate this way, or rotate the other way. Right? Now the other thing is, it works, what works very well is that the back of the antenna, you know, any antenna has a forward gain and it has a rear entry gain. Well, if, you, if you're looking for a really, really sharp signal, you might try using the back of the antenna. You have a very narrow lobe in the back and much bigger gain load than the front. So just a simple antenna will give you 20 dB attenuation, and front to back will give you another 10 to 20 dB attenuation. So you don't have to go and buy expensive attenuators. You can work with just this antenna. Uh, Steve, W-I-2-W, if you guys know Steve, prefers this antenna. Every time I go out, he and I have a fox hunting team usually, he prefers this antenna and been very successful at getting good directional inputs for it. So, you, again, we'll, we're going to give you some information about the dimensions of this antenna, but it's on the web. You can look for, for um, antennas on the web. The, they take called tape measure antennas. But keep in mind, there's lots of techniques. Horizontal, vertical, front, and back. All work very well. Now, an, another antenna that has good gain. There are four sheets. Take one of each and then pass it on. Uh, is a, a Moxon antenna. If you can see here, this loop that I'm pointing at you is got longer sides 
and the vacuum has got shorter sides, okay? Well, uh, that gives you a two, a two element beam. The back, the longer one is the reflector, and the driven element is in the front. And again, the same story. If you aimed it this way, you get a good signal, and if it's working polarized, you've got the maximum signal you're going to get. And again, I have a handle here that I plug in the bottom, and mounting it horizontally, you can get a DD loss. And, and once again, and I know that Dick used the mock sign to mock find the fox once, and the back of the antenna, again, is a very narrow beam and a much lower gain beam. So again, you've got DB front and loss and, and a horizontal and, and, and a horizontal and vertical uh, gain. Now, I, I built this obviously out of a PVC pipe, but you could simulate something to support two wires out of wood. And again, the expense of these items uh, is minimal compared to the um, uh, buying the, uh, loss, the building loss and attenuator and building the, ring, the other antenna, attenuator. Now, if you have trouble with a plastic walkie talkie and you want to shield it, simple solution. You can get make up something like this with one? Reynolds wrap and, and paper and uh, five uh, netting, or you can go to the hardware store and buy a uh, uh, an aluminum tube. You can buy a, a, a dryer stone pipe for two and get your arm in there, hold your walkie-talkie in there, and this works very well. Just simply this thing works very well. But again, on close-up, you can't be too close, can't be too far away with this sort of antenna. Once you get close, it will work quite well with any you Just give me, give me that uh, walkie-talkie for a second. So you put it in here. All right, now you see the antenna sticking out, yay. But you can pull the antenna back when you're close, or push it forward. And so a simple thing like this works excellently. <coughs> Direction. Sometimes awesome. people cut a hole here so they can look at the CDS meter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. If you, if, you have, if you can't hear it well enough to get um, the peak, then uh, a view, a viewing window would be incorporated too. Okay, uh, the other thing is that Jim indicated. Um, I have a Bergen County map here. But what, what do you do with a Bergen County map? Where is north on a Bergen County map or any map? always the top of the map is north, okay? You don't, you, you don't have to have that little compass on the bottom of the map someplace, but the top of the map is always north. But that's not good enough. That's true north, but your compass reading is going to be deviated in, in this area about 13 to 15 degrees to the left. So you have to you have to shift um, the map to correspond with the reading. What, the, what do you call it? The that's a declamation. Of that right? Unless you use your smartphone and uh, that one will point you to two true north. Okay. So bear in mind, maps are good, but the map is not the same as the compass reading. You got to allow the map. The map will get you close, and in fact, the map that can be a very good clue because sometimes when you do make a couple of readings and you look at the map and you say, hmm, what's this green thing? Oh, a park, let's go there. So that helps sometimes, would you? The year we went with Kelly, yeah. we got on a mountain in Emerson. Yeah. We looked right across, I knew just where it was. You could see the signal coming right at us. Yeah, well, we were in the Boy clear Scout, and didn't yeah. have any reflections. Al altitude makes a big difference. Yeah. Altitude, yeah. Is this the kind of equipment that the FCC uses when somebody's jamming? And they don't use any. They have much more expensive yeah, than they have, they, They've got uh, what they call Doppler stuff. You know the uh, thing that they use on the police with the four antennas? <laughs> yeah. It's very similar to that. In fact, I don't know, it's one of them. Um, Bennett's not here. He was going to be here. He has a Doppler type thing, and what it does is it looks, is, looks at the time of arrival of the signal and goes into a mixer and comes out with an indicator indicating which way the, the signal came from. Okay. Okay. Charlie has one too. I think. And, so that's yeah. the same principle as the low jack and the, the right. yeah. low jack That's the, the way low jack works. Yeah, we had the four antennas. Because low jack yeah. has the four antennas. Mm -hmm. And then it's got the indicator in the police vehicle, right. which tells you which direction a bad guy is with the stolen car. Oh. It also that, has that, a graph as you get closer. Yes, you see the signal strength go up. Right. So that's a TDOA method, time difference of arrival. Right, right. Time time difference. Difference. A few moments.
Uh, now there are kits you can buy, and they're I don't know, they're not not inexpensive. They're like a hundred dollars, hundred fifty dollars, where you can actually build something like that. They show them, and it does I, work. I just saw one in QST for three hundred and ninety. Three hundred ninety. Yeah. Was that a kit? Package? Not no, a kit. No, it wasn't a kit. It was yeah, that was already. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, there are, you know, for the guys who are really serious about this, they do it. This little kit here that I have here with a little offset attenuator, there's a schematic of it in this thing here that's being given out. Uh, the offset attenuator kit here, I think I bought it. Uh, it was uh, it was like ten dollars. It's like four parts, and I just put it in this little aluminum box. This is a again an attenuator of the type that Jim's got, but this particular one, um, somebody had apparently applied power to it and scorched it. <laughs> but I went back to an old ARL magazine and they had an attenuated similar construction and I rebuilt it. And it's about about 80 dB. Going beyond an 80 dB attenuator is unnecessary yeah. because you can't get that much gain. But these are at 5 dB steps, 5, 10, and 20 dB steps. And by playing with the switches, you can do the same thing. You hook this to your radio um, and the and the antenna goes in here. And if you look around, you can find burnt down attenuators at the flea markets that people will sell it really cheap. And it doesn't take much to find a circuit to rebuild it to get the right DB gain on it. And of course, after you get your uh, after you get your reading on your map, having a protractor from, remember you back in ge geometry class, you had a protractor? Having a protractor will avoid the problem. But some people will take a compass and say, oh, it's over there. I'll put that on top of a map and put this a metal car, <laughs> okay? Oh, yeah. The map doesn't, the compass doesn't work on the hood of a car. Uh, uh, I've, I've often brought a small class of wooden table, uh, the uh, TV tables that you kind of have next to your TV. And I set that up with the map on it, away from the car, so you don't get a, a variation. You've got to be careful when you're using a magnetic compass, don't put near your speaker. Yeah, anything with magnetics or anything with metal. And again, even up at the high school, um, I don't know how many guys have been fooled. There is depends upon the location of the fox, but I've seen situations where people swear the fox is in Ridgewood. You know? Oh yeah, I mean when he, when we start out, you'll see everyone has to go where they think it is, and uh, you know you'll see four guys who go this way, uh, another three will go that way, and they say, what, "What are they looking at? You know, we we got to be here, but." They were closer to the building, they got a reflection. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said, uh, in many cases, it's good to step you know, a quarter mile away, do it again, and then see if you're still on the same track. Our trick has been to take a reading at the high school and then go down Forest Avenue to the Jewish Cemetery. It's a nice flat ground. There's only granite in there. <laughs> you lift a stone up on the top of a grave, so they get buried in there. <laughs> yeah. And we take a reading in the cemetery. That's uh, a better chance of getting a, a truer reading on a level ground where there's no signal coming in. And, and you always get people who start questioning you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> especially this. So we try to explain our electronic box. But every once in a while, you, you just get the idea to, to, to have some devilish fun. And you're sitting out there, and this lady walks over, and she says, what are you doing? You say, did you see a bear with a collar on it? <laughs> That's right. Has anyone ever called the police? Has anyone ever called the police on you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, they call the police on us. Uh, many times. <laughs> any questions about uh, my, my antennas? Yeah. This, this day and age, anybody doing anything that is out of the oh, yeah. So we try not to do weird things. Uh, but uh, there are occasionally times where we'll stop on top of a hill and start making measurements and people will come out. Um, the fox was hiding one time at the high school, one of the high schools nearby and or grammar schools, whatever, and the police came there, somebody called the cops, and they wanted to know what they were doing. What you doing? And uh, fortunately, the, the police officer had his laptop, and the guy explained, Bergen Amateur Radio Association, but bump, bump, use our website, and they cop them up and say, hey, pretty neat, okay. <laughs> you know. So, uh, it was okay, but for the most part, people are saying, now, there are some very, very good uses for some of this equipment, as you know, um, 
there are a lot of times when people are uh, missing, and uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, but they're, they're um, my daughter is a, a teacher of the handicapped, and some of these kids are wanderers, and they uh, they have uh, uh, little transmitters on them. Oh, I didn't know that. And uh, yeah, so um, they use similar things to this on a different frequency to, to search for it, yeah. if they don't show up. So it gives us that type of uh, expertise, let's say, if we ever have to. And the other thing it's great for is if you've got some jerk who's jamming the repeater. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this goes back many years ago when a repeater in Paramus was young. Um, and we actually found a guy in Ridgewood using something like this who was jamming. And we waited in front of his house and this guy came on and uh, was uh, making all kinds of noises and comments. So he knocked on his door and uh, then we transmitted on the frequency as we walked into his house and we heard ourselves. So we knew we had him. The guy was very embarrassed and he never did it again. How did told everybody who he was. And that yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> How did Pete, I can't think of his call, came from Ramsey, H catch a guy in Brooklyn jamming 7-9 repeat years ago? <clears throat> they actually drove over there. And they actually had a couple of people who lived over there. Oh, that were and they were sitting right in front of a taxi who, who stand. Who were able to do that. Yeah, okay. so the well, other thing we had the problem is the taxi cabs. Yeah, uh, the they guys in taxi cabs with the Chinese radios were on the input frequency. Yeah. Because uh, some guy put them on that frequency. So you have a lot of that. Do you ever have the situation where you allow the fox to be on the move after a period of time? Uh, usually no. Usually the fox stays still. Uh, no, but I mean even after an elapsed period of time. Yeah, no, usually what we'll do is sometimes the fox will turn his power down when people start getting close. But, uh, you know, if you pick up and move, that's just going to confuse a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah. Plus so we want to eat pizza. So usually yeah, right. when we're, we're That's out the main we, goal, we, right? We, goal stay, we stay fixed. Did you ever set up a Pullman reservation? Uh, no. We, we set up close to, to that, fast. but no, it was a that little bit more. Do you know why, what the problem is over there? Yeah. The What's compass it? doesn't work. The compass doesn't work, work there? Because it's magnetized. It's magnetized. Oh, mines. okay, all the stuff in the ground. Oh, yeah, really? That's, yeah. your compass is, is... We set up in a park uh, in Ramsey one time, but what was the problem is that we were a little too far away. A lot of people had trouble finding us. Second time we won it was somebody said, oh, you were driving faster than we drove less miles. Do you remember that? Uh, well, what okay, yeah. Either. What Rich is saying is that, um, and we don't really do that, uh, although we used to take the mileage down. Yeah. Uh, we used to take the mileage that people drove with the idea that if two people found the box at the same time, the winner would be the one with the lowest the, mileage. Oh, that never happens. Though. But uh, we, it does never seem to happen. It happens with me at all. <laughs> yeah, I want to make a key point here. When you're searching with the, the basically the Yagi antenna, that's got a beam pattern, and it's fairly broad. So as you're loving, the, the peak level is actually quite broad and uh, sort of flat at the peak. Yeah. And, uh, one <coughs> of the that's other, why he brought in some more attenuation. Well, one of the other did. methods that's been used is the loop antenna, which actually Instead of looking for a peak, you look for a null. The null is yeah. actually only two to three Tony degrees has wide. An antenna that works it's actually that way. very sharp, the null. Sharper than the broad peak of right. the Yagi. Yeah. But again, the problem with a loop or problem with, with the is it's bi TDO antennas is bi-directional. Mm -hmm. well, you got to shield the back of it instead of going yeah. That's been done, and yeah. they've yeah. broken that ambiguity, and they have traditional marine... DF most, radio direction, most RDF, all of the low frequency. They use that big loop and they move that loop and most it's sharp. Most of the low frequency systems use yeah. the loop. Yeah. The loop is sharp. That's but why. Not on VHF. Uh, they yeah. don't use it. But, but right, you're right. All of the low frequencies. It's all loop, based on the loop, antenna. which has a sharp, deep yeah, note. Ran and all that stuff. Too. Right, so the AM radio, you got that. Yeah. Right there. The loop stick. Now, there are, there are two versions of loop. There's a current loop and there's a voltage loop. And the voltage loop may face. Uh, face towards the object, but the end of it would be for a current loop. So you, 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 have, you, you, have, you have to know what kind of loop you're working with. Yeah. Uh, and you test it 
about by knowing a, a definite signal coming from, say, the repeater. That's actually a very sharp note on either, the loop. Either direction. Yeah, the end, the end, ones that end up come off the end of the Yeah, the end of the fire. The Tony, <laughs> what you said about the reverse of the Aggie, sometimes, I, that's what my problem was the last time. I didn't think of it that way. I'm going the wrong way up in Hillsdale somewhere when you guys were in the Hillsdale post uh, parking lot. Now the way we organize it and do it is we go to, uh, in this case we'll be going over to the Westwood Junior Senior High School where the Vara people had their ham fest last week and uh, we'll meet there at around uh, noon time and everybody will kind of get their stuff set up and everything. The box will be at his hiding location. He'll call for one of the guys, like I'll probably call Tony, because I'm going to be the box this time, and um, just make a couple of measurements just to make sure that you're able to hear him, and then they'll coordinate it, and then they'll leave and go out and look for him, and then after that, uh, we all get together, we announce where we're going, not before, but after, uh, and we <laughs> go for pizza. So Yay. that's what we everybody finds the pizza. So, if, <laughs> <laughs> why don't you just announce the way they're going to have the pizza? You're all invited on uh, on Sunday if you want to come over. If you want to ride with someone and just see what it's like. Yeah. If you want to bring a radio uh, or something to do it. Now, now we've been talking about all of this fancy fancy stuff here, but I got to tell you a story. Uh, one of our new members, uh, who had never been on a fox hunt before, uh, showed up. Uh, with a radio and a Buick hubcap, a moon <laughs> hubcap, you know, the moon. And what, what he did was he found a signal, took off this thing, and no, okay, now I put a little bit on here, and he kind of shielded a little bit more. Okay, I know it's that direction. Started to drive around. He actually uh, used the radio in front of the. Um, Hubcap. Hubcap, yeah. And he moved it around like that and it acted as a reflector and he was able to look at the uh, thing and position himself. He ended up finding the fox. <laughs> was that Farrell on Sid? Uh, no, that was, uh, that was, uh, Sid uh, did that. When something Chris, right. no, I've also taken a, a three ring note, notebook, uh, <coughs> an empty three ring notebook, you know, the, the kind you close, got three rings in it, but put aluminum foil on two sides and made a corner reflector out of the notebook. Very simple. You can do this, you know, take a notebook off the kids' shelf that's that used. And you, you've got a corner reflector and you hold the phone, the, the microphone, the uh, radio in front of the. Uh, as long as you phone. have direct. Signal. Don has an antenna here yeah. too. John, you want to show us this one? Yeah. Don will show you his. Now, this, so this is an hour. Now, this is a little bit more sophisticated. It's, when we talked about the Doppler thing. Take a look at this. Uh, Pringles cans antennas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can just press the push to talk when I get it back. Okay. Let me just do it. Ooh, this is a time difference of arrival. Did you guys get a hand uh, up? Uh, no. So, so uh, pass them around? Yes. When anybody asks you what you're doing, you're looking for aliens. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like the bear. I like that. That's a wonderful one. It's a bear. I found it in the room. We're trying to talk to the aliens. Yeah. 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 Mongo. Uh, Tony, you free next year? Flash Gordon? Yeah. Use it next year. Yeah, Tony, you can press the button. Tony is... Okay. Oh, I like that. I like that. Okay. Now, he's right yeah, you're, you're bouncing signals off of Yeah, well, I got that. But, uh, okay. but you, you can hear the turn get down. And was there a forward you're, 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 in the back, a rear on that though? Yeah, if you're out and in the clear, you'll see this work much better. It's you get a peak when it's in phase? Is that what's happening? Yeah. You need to know. You'll hear it. You'll hear it. Now go, to, go to the null now. Go, go uh, horizontal, uh, in line. Oh, boy. Oh. 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 One thing they, I have some literature on it here, one thing they say that when you get into that close stage where you need the attenuator, this can be a, a, a assistance to you. It's a very little simple box, it's a 555 chip, a few parts, 
And uh, mounted on a cross arm, it's about two feet or so apart. With these, these are code headed wires. You have to buy expensive rubber ducks. They have a thing in the ALR handbook called the rubber duct, the directional binder. Not a, a big piece of aluminum. Uh, and this thing will fold up. I have it arranged so that these things fold up like this. I have, that's why you see the two screws are rough set. You'll have a there's a diode and a resistor out here. And also on this one here. And what happens is the uh, this is how this thing works. Is in a square way when it's a positive pulse, it activates the one and the negative pulse activates the other. And uh, then you have the ability to. Uh, I've done this at one night in Paris, I think you should have it, and we didn't have all the reflections that we have in here. And it, uh, Thank you. we picked out where the ball was with the uh, with See, the really, I didn't realize, what, you know, one thing you said there, well, it's what I had in this thing. Like I said, it's just a few parts, I'll have some literature for you. Point, because of that. Yeah. If, 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 if you do some uh, Googling uh, on, uh, on the internet, you'll and put that on Fox Line, you see all kinds of things and all kinds of things that people have done. A lot of very interesting stuff. But as I said, on Sunday, this coming Sunday, we'll be over there at the high school. So if you want to come over uh, and come along with somebody, ride with somebody, watch what's going on, or you can set up a team with two of you and enter, uh, you know, oh, uh, an antenna from somebody or whatever, and uh, walk you up. That little arrow antenna that we have that a lot of us use for moon oh, yeah, bounce and you. stuff, not moon bounce, so satellite, mm -hmm. that, uh, that works very well. Mm -hmm. okay. Just commercial out there. Right. Okay. So. All right, anybody, anybody else have any other questions? Mm -hmm. Carl, oh, oh, didn't you just find somebody with a simple setup uh, with the, the, uh, the key mic? Oh. What? I have Remember a Moxon uh, antenna. Yeah, yeah. If somebody wants to use it, uh, all right, so you guys, I'll bring it. Sunday. No, in fact, I'll give it to someone here today before maybe Who's Tony. Okay, you know, Richard's got an antenna. Yeah, you just have question, Jim, is that if somebody didn't get copies of this, is it okay if we scan it, put it up on the blog? Sure. Okay, great. So, uh, oh, there's, a, there's copies here. Are those okay, extra great. copies? <laughs> there's extra copies. Okay, over. just want to make sure. Because okay. I had enough for 40 people. Oh, oh, oh okay. Oh, oh. Jim, there's a question over here. Yeah. Uh, uh, is, is there any best uh, approach pattern, especially if something is, you know, at a mile or more away, obviously, as far as zigzagging, first going horizontal to get uh, There's a couple of different theories, as I mentioned to you before. Uh, let's say you got a signal this way. Sometimes you can go off at a whole blank uh, 30 degrees, let's say, and you go a mile, and you take another reading. Okay, and now that reading points you up. Let's say now you've gone no, this just, way. I'm all right. Now that I'll reading says hand. this. That's a good indication that you've gone the right direction. And of course, what you can do the is then head in the other direction and do the same and see where it ends up. And that's where it's good to have a map because when you put the lines on the map and see where they cross, a lot of times it'll give you, oh, look at there's a green here. This has got to be. Vanslong Park, or it's got to be something, something in the park. So you, you can get a pretty good idea that way. And of course, uh, what some people do is bring their laptop and uh, pull the map up and take a look and see where it is and that way. But, uh, you know, we go to a public place, most often a, a park or something like that, uh, because otherwise, uh, you know, People start looking at you. And you, you don't want to obviously go to a place that's private because you don't have permission to be there. And uh, uh, although we don't have any trouble starting at the high school, as I say, we did have problems when we set up in a school. So we kind of avoid that type of thing. And as I say, the park is the best way. People come by, uh, they want to know what you're doing. We tell them what we're doing. We're a fox. Oh, hey, it's pretty neat, you know. First question is amateur radio. People still do that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I get that work all the time. Yeah. And of course, most of the time, I think we're CB or something. <laughs> oh, my, he's, my brother in law does that. He's uh, Big Bob. You know Big Bob? Uh, <laughs> Jim, we have a banner now in the trailer that says amateur radio. Yes, we still do that. That's yes, right. Hey, that's good. Oh, yeah, I didn't okay, know that. Good idea. Yeah. I've, had that, I've had that question so many times. I would just make a recommendation from my experience with finding people in the park who were doing things without a permit. 
just stop by the police station of whatever town that you want to set up in and just let them know that you're doing yeah. it. This well, way that's probably a good idea. Field calls, you know? Yeah. Are uh, you familiar with a piece of marine equipment, which is basically an AM broadcast radio with a compass on top and yeah. a directional antenna? Yeah. I just yeah. covered that before. Oh, okay, I missed yeah. that part. That's, that's the, the, the loop. That's no, a loop yeah. Yeah. That's a loop stick, basically, a fancy loop yeah. stick. Yeah, it yeah, helps. That's, that's the way. And that's the, the way the, oh, the ram a thousand miles out. So yeah, but those are low frequency type things. The ram operated up there. So that's it. If you have any questions or like to come over and look at all this stuff, uh, we'll leave it over here for you to do that. And don't forget, if you come, we have pizza after. <laughs>